Matt Bonner, the man of many famous nicknames like the Red Rocket and the Red Mamba, was known for his red hair as well as his elite three-point shooting for his size and even being the best three-pointer shooter in the league for a short period of time, all while being the only player in NBA rocking New Balance shoes. This is a look back on fan favorite Matt Bonner's career. Bonner attended Concord High School in Concord, New Hampshire, playing power forward at 6'10", 240 pounds. While there, he led the high school to three state championships. All the while, he was a diligent student in the classroom, earning a valedictorian. Men's Recruiting Service Consensus Index had him as the 38th ranked recruit in the class of 1999. But the most surprising thing about his time in high school is Matt Bonner won a dunk contest. Yes. Matt Bonner won a dunk contest. Bonner would end up being heavily recruited, but ultimately would decide to go to Florida and play for Billy Donovan. Bonner would come off the bench his freshman year in all 36 games, playing behind two future NBA players at power forward and center in Udonis Haslam and Donnell Harvey. Bonner would end up averaging 4.8 points, 3.2 rebounds, 0.4 assists, 44% shooting from the field while playing 13 and a half minutes a night. Now Florida would make the NCAA tournament as a five seed and would embark on an incredible run. In round one, Florida would barely beat Butler thanks to future NBA players Mike Miller's buzzer beater, then swiftly took care of Illinois in round two. Now Bonner's best game would come against number one seeded Duke in the next game where he went four for five from the field. Florida would end up making it all the way to the national championship game before losing to Michigan State led team by Morris Peterson and Charlie Bell 89 to 76 all in Bonner's freshman season. Bonner would end up playing more his sophomore years because a Brent Wright went down with a foot injury. Now Bonner would end up starting 17 games because of this playing 28 and a half minutes a night while averaging 13.3 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds and 1.5 assists. Now the Gators would get a 3 seed this year, but would go home early in a blowout loss in round 2 to Temple. Bonner would officially become a full-time starter his junior year for Florida, while averaging similar minutes, but his production increased to 15.6 points a night, 7.2 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game, all while doing this on a 5 seeded Florida Gators. Now they would go down round 1 to a 3 pointer by Terrell Taylor with .2 seconds left in the NCAA tournament unfortunately. Bonner during his senior year would lead the Florida Gators in averaging 15.2 points a night with 6.1 rebounds, 1.5 assists, while shooting 47% from 3. Bonner would lead the team to a 2 seed, but they would get knocked out round 2 to Michigan State ending his college career. He was a first team All-SEC player this year, as well as an honorable mention for All-American by the Associated Press. He would end up graduating with 3.96 GPA and earning academic All-American for basketball. While in college, Bonner saw his three-pointer truly evolve into a weapon, convincing teams to take a shot on him in the NBA draft. Bonner would end up being selected with the 45th overall pick in the 2003 NBA draft by the Chicago Bulls, but then was swiftly traded to the Toronto Raptors for a future second round pick that would end up being Chris Duhon. The Raptors did not have a roster spot available at the time though, and asked Bonner to play overseas for a year and hone his skills with the verbal promise to make the team the following year. Bonner signed with Cecilia Messina of the Italian League in Messina, Sicily. Cecilia this year would file for bankruptcy actually in the middle of the season and stop paying its players. Now many players left the team because of this, but Bonner decided to continue to play and finish the year averaging 19.2 points and 9.3 rebounds for the team. The Raptors saw enough of his time in Italy to give him a chance in the NBA, giving him a one-year deal set at league minimum. Now he would end up playing in all 82 regular season games this year, coming off the bench while averaging 18.9 minutes a night, 7.2 assists, 3.5 rebounds, all while shooting 42% from the three, and he remains the only Raptors rookie to this day to play in all 82 regular season games. This season Matt Bonner would receive the nickname that would stick with him the rest of his career, the Red Rocket. This was because his red hair and his constant use of the public transit in Toronto. Because the Toronto Transit Commission slogan is, ride the rocket. And he also didn't want to buy a car. <laughs> Toronto would actually end up going 33-49 and 49 this season, missing the playoffs. Realizing they had found a rare big at the time who could hit threes, the Raptors would give Bonner another contract for two years, four million. Bonner's numbers would remain almost the same as the prior season, averaging 21.9 minutes a night, 7.5 points, 3.6 rebounds, all while shooting 42% behind the arc. 
Now Toronto, however, would struggle even more though than so this season, going 27 and 55. Toronto wanting to make a move to change things up after the bad season would trade Bonner with Eric Williams in a 2009 second round draft pick that would end up being Jack McClinton to the San Antonio Spurs for Rasho Nestrovic, giving the Raptors a starting center. Now Bonner's numbers would end up decreasing this season on a more competitive Spurs team. Bonner would end up playing 56 games this season while averaging 11.7 minutes a night while shooting 38% from three scoring 4.9 points a game and averaging 2.8 rebounds, with the Spurs going 58-24 and 24 this season being a legit contender. Now the Spurs would end up dominating this postseason led by Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili again. The Spurs would end up winning the NBA championship in a sweep against LeBron James led Cavs. Bonner would not play much however this postseason run, only playing in 9 games, averaging 2.8 minutes and .8 points. But hey, he was an NBA champion now. Matt Bonner would re-sign with the Spurs in the offseason to a three-year contract worth $8.94 million. Next year would be more of the same in terms of numbers and team success during the regular season. Bonner would, however, play several more games at least with 68 this season, with averages of 12.5 minutes a night and 4.8 points, but on the opposite side of things, a career-low 33.6% from three. The high for Bonner on the season though was on December 11th in 2007 in a loss to Golden State where Bonner would actually record a season high of 25 points with 17 rebounds in the same game. Now the Spurs would make it back to the playoffs again this year but would not repeat as champs. They would end up losing 4-1 to the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Bonner again would not see much playing time in the postseason only playing in two of the games. Bonner would need a big year after slumping the past several in a big year he had. Bonner would end up playing in 81 games the next season, starting the majority of the time at power forward alongside Tim Duncan. He would end up averaging 23.8 minutes a night, 8.2 points a game, 4.8 rebounds, all while shooting 44% from the three, finding his form again. This again would be on a Spurs team with one of the better records in the league at 54 and 28. However, the Spurs would get upset round one in the NBA playoffs to the Dallas Mavericks four to one. Bonner would end up starting in all five of these games, but would struggle only scoring three points a night with a 23% from downtown, normally his bread and butter. Matt Bonner would be moved back to his bench role for the following seasons after this. Matt Bonner was still playing more than he was the prior couple years ago, which was a good thing for him, averaging 17.9 minutes a night with seven points a game while shooting 39% from three next season. Highlight during the regular season this year for him was on December 7, 2009 when Bonner scored a career-high 28 points while grabbing 8 rebounds against the Utah Jazz. As per usual, the Spurs were a strong regular season team going 50-32 and 32 this year. They would end up making the playoffs and would go to the second round before being swept by the Phoenix Suns duo of Nash and Stoudemire. Bonner would play better this go around in the postseason averaging 5 points a game, 3.2 rebounds while shooting 37% from 3. Bonner again would re-up with the Spurs in the offseason with a four-year $13.89 million contract. Now Bat Bonner would go on to put up one of his best statistical seasons this year. He would average 21.9 minutes a night, but was extremely effective in his time scoring with 7.3 points with an average 45.7% from three, which was the best in the NBA that year. Bonner was doing all this on a dominant Spurs team, favored to go far, ending the season with a 61-21 and 21 record. However, this did not happen. They would end up being upset in round one by the eighth-seeded Grizzlies, led by Gasol and Randolph in six games. Now, Bonner would play solidly, but nothing of note standing out with averages of 6.3 points and 3.2 rebounds throughout this series. Bonner again would be in a similar role this next season with totals of 6.6 .6 points on 42% from three. The Spurs again would have another phenomenal regular season getting the one seed again. They would, however, sweep Utah in round one and the Lakers in round two before going down to the Oklahoma City Thunder and Kevin Durant in six in the Western Conference Finals. Bonner's playing time, however, would shrink this postseason, only averaging 12.7 minutes a night and 2.4 points a game. Bonner's role going forward would be very similar to this postseason run for the Spurs. Next season, he would average 13.4 minutes a night with 4.2 points a game while shooting 44.2% from three off the bench. Bonner would participate in the 2013 NBA three-point shootout this year during All-Star Weekend, thanks in large part to his social media campaign to get the Red Rocket in. 
The social media campaign would go well after Kobe Bryant earlier in the year was talking about his 81 point game against Toronto, when someone jokingly said that wouldn't have happened if the White Mamba was there, aka Brian Scalabrini, in which Kobe responded, but the Red Mamba was, referring to Matt Bonner. Thus, the nickname Red Mamba was born. Bonner at the three-point shootout would record a score of 19 in the first round to knock out Ryan Anderson at 18 and Stephen Curry at 17, and it would advance to the final where he would lose to Kyrie Irving 20-23. to Now the Spurs this season were a contender yet again with the emergence of Kawhi Leonard growing and fitting perfectly alongside the consistent, stable, forever lasting big three of Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili. The Spurs and the Heat seemed destined to meet each other and meet each other since the start of the season and they did in the NBA Finals. The Heat and Spurs would not disappoint, with the series going to seven games. The Miami Heat would however win, giving LeBron his second ring, and this is in large part due to Ray Allen's miraculous corner shot three, which saved the series for the Heat, becoming an iconic NBA moment. Bonner would average 4.1 points a game this postseason, while shooting 46.9% from three, playing a key asset off the bench. Bonner was accepting of a smaller role the next season to continue playing on a championship level team while only averaging 11.3 minutes a night, but he still did what he does best when his number was called upon, shooting 42.9% from three. The Spurs again were the top team in the West and would go on to face Miami in the finals yet again. However, the Spurs team took another jump thanks in large part to Kawhi Leonard improving even more so. The Spurs would win the NBA championship in five over Miami, giving Bonner his second ring. Bonner would end up playing 6.2 minutes this postseason run in 22 games, averaging 1.2 points on the NBA championship winning San Antonio Spurs. Matt Bonner yet again would re-sign in the offseason to the San Antonio Spurs on a one-year $1.45 million contract. Matt Bonner would actually start 19 times this year, the second most in his career in large part when San Antonio needed to rest its aging players, averaging 3.7 points a game. His numbers slipped yet again because of tennis elbow supposedly from the new large iPhone. His words, not mine. <laughs> the Spurs would struggle way more this year though, only getting the sixth seed. They would go seven games in the playoffs against the Clippers in round one before being sent home by Chris Paul's last second game winning shot. Bonner would re-sign with the Spurs in the offseason for one year $1.5 million. However, he would only play in 30 games this season, averaging 2.5 points per game, but still an ever effective 44.1% from three. The Spurs would finish second in the Western Conference this year, but would go down into Oklahoma City in round two in six games. Matt Bonner unfortunately did not play at all this postseason. Matt Bonner realized his time was up in the NBA and decided to retire after this season, and the Spurs jokingly honored him by retiring his flannel shirt in the locker room. After retiring from professional basketball, Bonner would go on to join the San Antonio Spurs TV broadcast as a studio analyst. Matt Bonner will always be remembered as a fan favorite for his play and his overall appreciation towards the fans during his 12-year career where he would average 5.8 points, 3 rebounds, 0.7 assists, and 41.4% from 3. His elite 3-point shooting was important on helping the Spurs win two NBA championships, helping him carve out a long career for someone who would spend his first year professional not even in the NBA. Thank you Matt Bonner for a colorful and unique career. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see any videos on any other random players in the future, please leave a comment down below and I might just pick them and do a video on them. Thanks again for watching. This has been Skid Denver.